Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malsberg. Do you think it's, you have to approve this funding? Listen, this is a problem of the president's own making. He He's been president for five and a half years. When's he going to take responsibility for something? That's a darn good question, and uh, we welcome you back. Uh, joining us now is Clara Del Villa. She's founder and CEO and president of the Hispanic Post, and she uh, joins us uh, from Las Vegas. So uh, I don't know if you can actually speak from Vegas, because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, they tell us, right? <laughs> Welcome Steve. aboard, Clara. I'm happy to be here. To Th thank you very much. All right, so, um, so much. You, you know, you were you were at a piece um, talking about ending the immigration crisis. Let let, let me you draw. You see this as a, as a, an extension. What's happening with these kids as an extension of the overall problem? I do, Steve. I do. Um, uh, certainly, the um, the Victims Authorization Act from 2008, uh, the asylum clause in that act, and the ambiguity about the treatment has aggravated the situation that we've seen develop with the children at the border. And I don't see the president's treatment at this uh, helping at all. Helping well, at all. Well, uh, as far as that law goes, right? With the president, I mean, first of all, the, the the president back at the end, the end of June, said he wanted we should repeal that law. Harry Reid said yesterday, I'm not repealing it, so I got to believe that came from the president. Nancy Pelosi yesterday said, we shouldn't repeal that law. So they have no intention of repealing that law. And the president, who repeals laws whenever he feels like it, or you know, selects which parts of laws he'll enforce and which parts he won't, has given no indication that he'll just say, we're not going to enforce that portion of that law, which would also fix the problem. So they apparently want this to go on. I agree, Steve. I think that the again the asylum clause in that uh, in that bill uh, in that law I think is being aggravated here. And essentially, um, uh, you know, this case also, if you listen to the president, he talks about encouraging deportation of the children because of the dangerous road they've traveled, and actually their life here will not necessarily be better than where they came from. Then the next day, he changes his mind, and the deportation is not part of the dialogue. So every day seems to be a new way of treating this issue. I think it's meant to make conservatives, Republicans, look like the, the bad guys in this whole situation, and there's no resolution in sight from what I can see from right. the administration. Right. Well, of course, you're right. And of course, we've had uh, senators uh, say, uh, you know, just uh, take them to a hotel, give them a shower, buy them new, a new outfit, feed them, and then put them on a plane and send them back. And that could all be done for a thousand bucks a kid. A absolutely. What, what mystifies me is, again, I also think that now would be a good time for the president to reach out to the presidents of these Central American countries. Uh, if you note, the, uh, the first ladies of Guatemala and Honduras have actually been saying that it's not violence that is causing this, uh, this exodus. It's that many of these children have guardians or parents already in the United States that are likely undocumented. Uh, Steve. That's why they're left alone at the border towns. So that aggravates the chaos that we're in right now. I think that's an un unacknowledged uh, element in this whole crisis that makes the situation much more chaotic. And, you know, and, and uh, we have uh, talked about uh, immigration reform. Uh, I, I'm of the opinion that uh, it's a lose-lose issue for, uh, for Republicans, and, and they're smart to stay away from it. Uh, because, uh, for instance, in, in your piece, you know, you talk about uh, a bunch of steps that should be taken, and w w number one is securing the border, and that's what Republicans talk about is securing the border. But the fact of the matter is, we don't have to pass one single new law to secure the border because the border is supposed to be secure already. It's it's been a disappointment. Uh, it's been a disappointment that's only been. Um, uh unfolding month after month. Uh, Governor Perry has been addressing this issue, as we've seen over the last several weeks. And, um, and at the end of the day, if you look at the supplement uh, bill, the $3.7 billion or almost $4 billion, only a small part of that funding, new funding, really addresses the, the border security, surveillance, and border agents, additional border agents that are needed to address the issue. As Congressman Henry Cuellar was really addressing the fact that the border agents now are taking care of the children and not protecting the border. And that manpower shortage is a recipe for continued disaster here. No, right, absolutely. But even before 
before this uh, recent influx of uh, the children, um, the president hasn't uh, secured the border. Uh, the president hasn't, uh, you know, obeyed the law as it exists. So that's why. I mean, how could I? I, I don't under, you know, I don't understand how any Republicans uh, could think, with all due respect to your proposals, that if you do pass uh, a law or a bill, that the president will be any more inclined to to, to follow the law once it's new, uh, the way he hasn't followed the law that we have now. Steve, I, I'm afraid you're right. I think that um, certainly when I proposed steps, it was with the eye towards thinking this was an administration that's looking at problem solving. Unfortunately, it looks like we're surrounded by political pundits. The fingers are mostly pointed at Republicans and conservatives as the bad guys, the insensitive ones, when essentially what we're trying to do is create immigration policy that is law, not a guideline, uh, you know, not a, uh, not a guideline from what we're seeing right now. So again, I think the notion of feeding the children, taking care of the children, and then deporting them back to their home country is actually a more humanitarian solution that recognizes our legal system and also the, no the notion that we don't want to encourage young children to make this journey time after time. There doesn't look to be any slowdown as we look down the path in this, uh, in this tragic uh, line of young children coming coming into the border. Clara, is there any indication that conditions have all of a sudden changed in these uh, Central American countries where these kids have uh, suddenly decided to, uh, or the parents have suddenly decided to, uh, to, to ship their kids from? Because if you listen to some on the left, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a humanitarian crisis, but the humanitarian crisis is in these nations, and we, it's our responsibility now to fix the conditions, the living conditions in those nations, and they're coming in waves now because things have just gotten so terrible. I had one liberal pundit on yesterday on the panel compare it to the, the, why people fled Nazi Germany, which I, I was outraged at. So has there been any sea change on the ground in those countries, like in the last few months? Uh, Steve, I think, and, and, I, and I, I share your outrage, I think uh, there's no question that uh, the Honduras, uh, uh, the, the, the murder capital of the world, has been indeed a title that's been granted from the UN. Uh, El, El Salvador, Guatemala, these are poor nations. They're not doing a good job about creating opportunities for their people. Uh, nevertheless, I think that um, the, the real exodus encouragement into the United States has been uh, factored from the DREAM Act, and it's been the lax immigration policy enforcement of the United States that has encouraged this. So uh, the First Lady from Guatemala yesterday mentioned that uh, while the country conditions are not good, there hasn't been a steep drop in the last few months. What's really happening is that what these children want to do is reunite with their undocumented parents or relatives or guardians in the United States now during the Obama administration because clearly they're not that focused on enforcing, you know, our borders or our laws. So now's the time to take advantage of it. Again, I want to emphasize that while certainly the job creation possibilities are not abundant, in these nations, there's no question that um, there is an under there's an under undercurrent here that is driving the exodus, not new new unnecessarily bad economic conditions right. in and these nations. And of course, one might say the administration uh, expected this and planned for it because of the uh, the ads they've taken out looking for people uh, way in advance of this happening. Uh, indicating that this was going to happen, they needed chaperones uh, uh, for uh, to take these to take uh, undocumented, as they called it, kids around the country. And uh, <laughs> you know, they must. Uh, I, I wonder if they play the lottery, uh, you know, and predict the numbers that with that accuracy as well. Well, what, what kind of lives are these children going to have? Again, if they're going to really connect with undocumented parents, they can't come forward because then, they, because then there's, a, there's a visibility element that makes uh, the whole situation tenuous. But what I'm saying is that these children now are basically submitted to a life of uh, poverty, it living in the shadows, their opportunities aren't increased necessarily by coming here, and that 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 uh, element is only um, 
emphasized by making it here in one piece. The drive across Mexico has, from all that we understand, uh, is fraught with danger, with uh, peril the whole way through. Absolutely. So again, the point here is that we're not really emphasizing the, the fate of the children that come to the United States once they arrived as undocumented and troubled children. And I would also say that uh, the president should be reaching out to the heads of states of all these Central American countries, including Mexico, yep. to really draw a solution to this issue. I don't know why they aren't focusing well, on that. Not to mention getting our Marine back from Mexico, but that's a whole other story. Uh, Clara, thank you very Indeed much. Always is. great to talk to you. Steve, thank you very much. My you pleasure. Have a great afternoon. You too. All right, folks. Uh, very interesting. And, um, uh, you know, I think the reason that uh, the president won't reach out to the uh, heads of the other nations is because uh, he has no interest in this stopping. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it's just, uh, it's sad. And, and it's, what it's really doing is putting these kids, as, as Clara said, in danger of all kinds of things. All right, when we come back, folks, it's Give Me Five Time right here on the Steve Ballsberg Show on Newsmax Television.